this is a video I am gonna present use uh, for the purposes of human rights ombudsman in Slovenia. The human rights ombudsman in Slovenia all without any exception were involved in my case since 1995. Um, however, when it comes to Matyas Hanzek, when it comes to, let me demonstrate to you. When it comes to this man here that you see by the name Ivan Biziak. Yeah, this individual here. This individual traveled to Moscow beginning the 1991 and got to know very well Yeltsin personally. Uh, this individual was, let me see that. Wikipedia states that he became a human rights ombudsman in Slovenia beginning the 1994 uh, up to 2000. That's basically when I left the United States of America in 1995. Uh, this man became a human rights ombudsman. His name is Ivan Biziak. This is a very, very interesting man, not because only he would be a good friend of Yeltsin, absolutely of Milan Kuchan, but because in 1993, individual became Minister for Interior and stepped down in 94 due to a robbery which took place in Klagenfurt in Austrian Celovitz in Slovenia they say Austrian Klagenfurt in neighboring Austria right across the border in Austria there was a robbery and in that robbery I personally was also involved in in Not because I would go out there and rob anybody or anything like this. No, 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 no. But in a little bit, I will explain to you. This is, these are just the names, very important names. This is, keep in mind, this was also human rights ombudsman involved already since 1991. Uh, this individual is Matyash Hanzek is his name. Um, I wouldn't say that he traveled to Moscow, uh, just like, for instance, as this guy here did. Um, I wouldn't go that far, uh, but he became more and more evident, uh, talking about Matyash Hanzek, supporter of Milan Kuchan something that became completely undeniable. This individual, however, stepped down from position. I'm just going to do a nutshell about the Slovenian human rights ombudsman and basically individual who became in charge for human rights in Slovenia. It's now King Charles. It used to be Prince Charles and it's now King Charles. I'm going to give you like overview about the criminal uh, background, basically a criminal evolution of 
Prince Charles is ownership in Slovenia as far as the human rights. But basically about how this individual here that you see have written my resume with my blood, basically, with the ink stashed in which my blood was stashed. So I should have gone, because this is the biggest problem to me, is not to go and submit the complaint. But the biggest problem with me, since this individual here, you see, labeled me with a psychiatric gag. This is the individual who ruined my life with a psychiatry. This is a psychiatry addict here that you see. I have a problem finding agency because he implicated anywhere from the police to the human rights ombudsman. Absolutely every institution in Slovenia in crime against me. He financed crime. This is a financier. It's a crime financier. And that's through the crime, basically, that he conspired against somebody. It's how he gets connected to different institutions in particular country, whatever country he uh, aims at through his divide and conquer game. This individual here that you see. So I'm going to give you a time lapse of how the human rights in Slovenia, human rights ombudsman in Slovenia evolutionized uh, into a complete sub-authority of what you see right there is serving this criminal here that you see. I'm going to get, this is the last human rights ombudsman and I'm going to explain to you how it all happened, this stuff here. So you're going to get an idea about so this was the first human rights ombudsman that traveled to Moscow. His name is Ivan Biziak. Became interior minister. Uh, stepped down because of um, affair with uh, police specials in Klagenfurt. Uh, let me let me see if I can find this in English. Yeah, it's about the robbery. Robbery that took place on a May 1994. And I'm going to demonstrate to you. Here you have an individual. <clears throat> who felt like, uh, not like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but felt he was as uh, Sylvester Stallone. These are Slovenian police officers that went on on a crime spree in the city right across the border. It's called the Klagenfurt. And uh, Klagenfurt would be the city that you see here in Austria. This here would be in Slovenia. They say Celovitz. Celovitz, Klagenfurt. And this here, now this here, this is basically what I am from. Novo Mesto. So if I zoom myself out, the story is really, really short. Slovenia, Austria, Italy here, uh, Bosnia, Croatia, 
Hungary, a little country, Slovenia, right there, you can see it. That's basically what that looks like. In 1994, what I'm interested in and what concerns this Milan Kucinis individual here that you see, not this one, this one here that you see, his name is Ivan Biziak. Uh, he implicated himself in one. This, this people here that you see here, inside of this house, our house here in the city, the Nova Mesta was a zoo inside. This became like a house where you would have KGB, all sorts of people, failed Yugoslav, Greater Chetnik Serbian state still remaining. Uh, intelligence that would gather here. This was like a private property of Milan Kuchan, basically. It seemed like as if my father completely lost title to house, the ownership whatsoever. And you, then you would have people like this, exactly as you see here with the Milan Kuchan, uh, all controlled 100% led by none other than Borut Pahor. In uh, 1993, uh, this individual here, did you see? Whose uh, mentor was uh, Milan Kuchan. This individual here, and then you have Danilo Turk, this here. These are just some, so I give you an idea who you have this here, but it doesn't matter. What you see here doesn't matter because in a little bit, in a nutshell, I'm going to demonstrate to you that the opposition of these people were the people who gave these people a total authority, a strength, a power, a dictatorship in Slovenia. Therefore, the opposition, now that's the one you should really be afraid of. And you have this individual here. Uh, I could say invaded Klagenfurt, Tselovitz area. Literally invaded, like you would take, except that they wouldn't go with the arms, with the weapons, but they would sit inside of the cars and they would roll onto the Klagenfurt to plunder, talking about the human rights issue, talking about uh, rights concerning issues, uh, people of their right to exist, basically. They, in other words, they entered Austria with me, holding me for the throat with everything they have managed to instill in me through the Moscow as a Nazi uh, entered Austria to terrorize uh, local politicians uh, and locals started a, a war zone basically in what is known as Kanten Kanten and also then uh, Steirska, Steiermark. Let's look at the composition of Austria. If you look, if you look at the lands, you're gonna realize that down on south that borders of Slovenia is Carinthia. It's known as a Carinthia, and then next to it is known as Styria. Needless to say, that both of these lands, at one point in time, sure enough, belong to little Slovenia, reduced to the size you see now. Germans have deprived Slovenia of both of these territories that you see right there, 
that is just a fact. I never denied. I never disputed any of that stuff. Uh, however, the problem I have is that I am a native Slovenian born in Slovenia who was labeled as a neo-Nazi uh, pimped literally by the Russians in Moscow uh, to go for the white women uh, pimped by the Russians in Moscow on behalf of British foremost, on behalf of London on behalf of United States of America White House which did nothing with their politicians, with their presence in Moscow in 1991 when this stuff all started 33 years ago I never officially yet was in the United States of America yet I would be hijacked all the time from Moscow to Great Britain to United States of America uh, and used to literally for the Serbian forces boost war on the Balkans against Croatia, Bosnia uh, in Slovenia they already failed because it was too far we didn't have a border with it uh, for the sake of recreation of new federation, failed federation Greater Chetnik State, known as previously known as a Yugoslavia, Serbian Chetnik State. So what you see right there, you have a politicians. Whatever basically remained from the times of Yugoslavia, now marching straight into Carinthia and into Styria, and were steering shit, using me, beating me up, treating me like an animal, like. You take somebody and you, you put, you drug him up and then you beat him up and you put the knife under his throat and you beat him up from one house to the other and this shit goes, uh, unrepent, unrepent, unrepently goes on for days and days and months and months and year after year. And you create a Nazi figure out of one. So you walk inside of the Carinthia and in Asteria and you start to steal shit. Terrorize local politicians and population with a gesture that I'm one of them. This is what Milan Kurchan started. In as early as in 1993, I underestimated individual Borut Pahor, Golovic and others. They started with this stuff way earlier than what I initially thought. And that's exactly what happened. It was in Slovenia, in a little Slovenia, crime on the steroids. Because the Moscow assured, where the Germans also gathered, that nobody can touch Slovenia. Because the Russia has a nukes, Slovenia believed that Slovenia is like a fucking owner of entire part of the Europe that you see here and can do pretty much a crime spree uh, just whatever the fuck you want better than a fucking movie you have a police officers involved in crime against me uh, walking straight into Whatever they did, I was not there, really. I was not there. But it was MK Ultra in Klagenfurt, uh, which was preceded with a visitations of Milan Kuchan, of Borut Pahor. They were terrorizing politicians over there. And you have these people here that you see. These are their names. Domen, Vivo, Darko, Zidansky, whatever they did. It doesn't matter. And it went on and robbed what did they rob exactly i don't even know what they robbed because i had no fucking idea what went on when you're drugged up used under mk ultra they would deliver me to klagenfurt and there was all kinds of stuff that went on some people were using me to smuggle the drugs some other people were using me, yeah, because you, you get like a passport. 
that allows you to enter any country in the world without you being uh, searched and that kind of stuff. So when it comes to the neighboring countries like Croatia and so on, it was all kinds of stuff that went on. These are not the only people who did this kind of stuff. Uh, when compared this to a Serbian uh, Rajnjatovic, Jelko Arkan Rajnjatovic, uh, when compared to the Serbian gangsters, some of which were arrested in Europe, using me also, these were not the only people who started to to engage in this kind of stuff. Whatever they did in Klagenfurt, I don't, I don't really know. I'm not, I don't have a time to go over these stories. But this is the evolution of Slovenian human rights ombudsman, so that I give you an idea what exactly, whom exactly have Prince Charles, now King Charles, now about six days or five days from being crowned, because he needs to be crowned, have affiliated, associated with, and created a human rights according to his taste. You know King Charles from Britain? I want to be very, very thorough about time lapse about the human rights, human rights ombudsman in Slovenia. This is basically how it all started. This little fuck had to step down. His name is Ivan Bizak. He had to step down under the pressure after the robbery from position of interior minister, but he was still good for the human rights ombudsman. This is where Prince Charles comes uh, to a prominence in Slovenia, a frequent visitor of Slovenia since 1991 with Prince Andrew. That's where he becomes extremely, extremely important during this robbery. Milan Kuchan suffered a tremendous blow. Borut Pahor, Milan Kuchan suffered a tremendous blow because of Slovenian police involved in MKUltra that came out actually as a, I'm not going to say as a murderer in this case. I already told you that people like this guarded a pit known as Hudayama. In case you want to go over, but this is the type of people who are doing the job. In my case, implicated since 1991. So what the Prince Charles does because of this partner of his, Milan Kuchan, Borut Pahor, Danilo Turk, Darnoshek suffered a tremendous blow. He affiliates himself with the Austrian government. And promotes this individual instead as a future human rights ombudsman. But for that matter, he have to yet to create a proper persona. So, Milan Kuchan finds him, I forward to this individual, to this fuck up here. A future replacement to this, this individual here. This individual, interesting enough, is right now in the Brussels. And he is communicating between the Moscow, Slovenia, and European Parliament, basically European officials, the common agenda. And what exactly is the common agenda? The common agenda looks like this, in a nutshell. Slaves. How did the man became a slavery commodity? Mladina is a company that was involved since 1995 in genocide against me. It's a Slovenian journal and demanded for me to see myself in this, what would be released in the future. And you see the black guy right there, shackled with a big ass chain right there. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Slaves. Would you like to be called a slave? No. What was done to me was a little bit worse than slavery because, as I stated, my dilemma is where to submit a complaint because of this obvious, because of the evidence I'm submitting to you right now through the Internet. And so what they wanted from me in this post here, so basically for me to see myself not in a black guy, not in a black guy, that's not what they wanted, but they wanted to brand me like the word I don't even want to use. It's a very derogatory word that nobody in the United States of America, as far as the black population, is willing to submit itself to. Due to a bloody past, they were subjected to. As you know, United States of America is a country built on slavery. And this here is about a trait, how the human became a slavery commodity. I just right now have stated the United States of America was built on a slavery. But this article is about how to return to the slavery, how to wipe the people out again. This is because using me is a recipe on how to return during this times slavery back on the map. This is Slovenia. I know so also because of what you see on the right side. Are we having a feel? Are we, are we emotional creatures where you see the dog right there with a picture with a lady? So they did this stuff so that I would remember where my place is. Uh, the problem is, this isn't about where my place is. The problem that concerns your portion of it. The problem that concerns your portion of it is, and that's how I got to that article. Because they will know that I will go after a present human rights ombudsman, which I already have demonstrated to you. This is this man here. Yeah, this is the guy they knew that they put. It's, it's, it's improperly done. The Wikipedia, I told you, this is controlled by the Britons. The problem for you is that this cluster fucks. That's how I am going to refer to this shit here until I actually pin his head against the floor. Even Biziox. This cluster fuckers, that's what your problem, your problem is. This cluster fuckers are sitting once a human rights ombudsman, he was the human rights ombudsman from 1994 to 2000 in Slovenia. These cluster fuckers are sitting inside of the council, in the General Council of European Union inside of the Brussels. Now we go back to this issue here that I demonstrated you about the slavery and stuff like this. It's not about, it's not an article that is dedicated to the slavery in the United States of America based on which the country was funded. 
but about how to create slavery. How do you create the slavery again? Well, you do exactly what they have done to me. You play the Orwellianism through the Moscow, sitting inside of the Brussels, taking the orders from the KGB, and you cluster fuck global composition of the governments till it's so cluster fucked that entire world on behalf of United States of America and greater the Great Britain, Prince Charles, now King Charles, Windsor, Saxe, Gotha, Coburg, Berlin, Angela Merkel, Heil, Hitler, Reichstag, accepts again slavery as why the fuck not? If they do it, concept, we can do it too, no? Do you understand how you return literally a human slavery back on the picture? This is the evolution of Slovenian Human Rights Ombudsman. You see this individual here? You see this clusterfuck? He's sitting inside of the General Council, inside of the European Union, and he's taking the orders from Vladimir Putin from Moscow, where he got to go visit beginning the 1991. These are the butchers that butchered me. Yes, things went terribly wrong with a robbery in Klagenfurt. And Prince Charles, eager to assist, took over since. And so we go to this individual here which became a human rights ombudsman. This is the individual who am I supposed to meet. His name is Petr Svetina. He's a pedagogue. I don't have to say anything. All I have to do is, I just got to go and read his... Uh, In 1992, 1994, he worked in, um, how do you say, Carinthia. In Carinthia, he worked in a sort of support team for people with, uh, probably in who needed assistance, you know, people that needed a, like, a, like a support. Uh, social support, rather than social support, I would say, yeah, kind of a social worker type of stuff. You know, a group, Lebenshilfe, Koroshka, Lidenitz, and so on. In 1994, upon the robbery, he got an invitation from general director he started to coordinate this, Spital and Drau, Ledenitzer, and so on and so forth. His career, in other words, in other words, his career took off. You see these gangsters here they caught from Milan Kuchin? They were a little bit too confident. They can do the stuff anywhere they want to do. Enter in housing, houses throughout Slovenia, beating up people, engaging in terrorism. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. Wild, wild west, don't worry. We are Russia. We got a nukes. Nobody's going to come. You see this stuff here? Well, Emil and Kuchan took a little bit too far. He took a little bit too far. He became a little bit too confident. It was a big blow to Milan Kuchan. It was a big blow to Danilo Turk. It was a big blow to Dernoshek. It was a big, big blow to Slovenian diplomacy. Because there is no Kuchan. There is no Dernoshek. There is no Danilo Turk. There is a Slovenian diplomacy. It was a big blow. Mr. Charles, Prince Charles, could you help? And the Charlie came to rescue. Charlie provided the rescue through this individual here that you see. And on his website, I have met him when brought to Carinthia 
the individual, this individual already was involved since 1991 too. His career took off and it's extremely, extremely impressive. I'm going to put the link right below so that you can help yourself with it and go over the stuff I am talking about right now. As you know, I'm about to go to extremely slow computer to Ljubljana. And so since I'm about to go to Ljubljana, why don't I present myself ahead of the visit to Ljubljana? Because the Human Rights Ombudsman is going to be my first stop. It's going to be my first stop regardless of what I state about this criminal here whom I am going to pursue to do his job. Whether he's going to do his job or he's not going to do his job, that's up to him. That's okay. He's going to get a treatment, diplomatic. But that's about it. This is an individual that was installed by the Milan Kuchan as a human rights ombudsman beginning the 2000 and. 19 officially, but what is interesting about this individual is the stuff that I have stated. When I say Slovenian diplomacy, make no mistake, it was Janez Janša who ran to rescue to Milan Kuchan with an affair known as the Palavas. These are the rich bigs, the big bigs, who also traveled to Moscow. The police officer you see right there, that you see right there, Janez Jansha right there. Uh, behind the two, you can see an individual who supposedly died in 2022, but I think he was just in a hurry into grave a little bit too much. So it would be a good thing to investigate and find out just how much this criminal involved since 1991 really is dead. Here, I'm talking about this individual here. His name... Vinko Beznik, the two did not get along with the Milan Kuchan at all. The two did not like one another with Milan Kuchan. And that basically is what they say. And so, whichever way you want to see it, the individual was involved since 1991. The important role he and Janša played in Slovenian democracy since 1990, when Slovenia became an independent state, was that truth about the genocide was silence to, like, you would say, like, vacuumed. And this is the truth about the butchery that went on for no less than 33 years. To the degree that, like Silence of the Lambs movie, that's a, like a perfect, perfect expression. And the Hollywood producers, when they started this case, I think that's where they got an idea about this whole thing. Like a place where you create a silence through unimaginable crime. Uh, and you dance on a political stage in front of the victim whom you throw, terrorize through the use of the psychiatry, basically a psychiatric gag. That's what it started in 1991 already. And giving him no chance to obtain proof of any kind till you destroy entire society 
tear one apart into pieces and then you tear apart in pieces the entire fucking world. Just as I already have demonstrated you, it's taking place. Through the Brussels. It's like a ripple that is increasing and increasing and increasing. It's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. This is the guy who disappeared in 2022. Of course, the two are enemies with the Milan Kuchan, but these people here also were enemies with the Milan Kuchan. The only thing they did was, upon the robbery in, failed robbery in Klagenfurt, they made sure somehow that they would return credibility to Milan Kuchan through affair known as the Palavas. A prosecutor, defender involved in MKUltra. Involved in MKUltra. Everybody here is involved in MKUltra. The two girls kissing the guy over there, the police officers, the police officer involved in involved in MK Ultra. May 23rd, 1994. March 1994, the Palavas.
it took me a little while because I have to admit I did make a mistake uh, in respect to timing uh, because I was certain it was Janis Jansha who followed up on Milan Kuchan uh, in 1994, basically talking about the robbery in uh, in Carinthia in Kenton Koroshka in 1994 which took place on May 1994 and I was gonna go and suggest well it was Janis Jansha who immediately followed up to cover up for Milan Kuchan uh, I don't know within the next month within the next few months in Slovenia uh, through attack uh, on Slovenian police officer who investigated a military, a special military unit called MORS. But I have to say, I made a mistake. The incident which Janis Jansha, for the sake of Milan Kuchan, orchestrated, uh, it's basically the goal was to disband compulsory Slovenian military known as Slovenska Teritorialna Obramba as fast and as soon as possible. So Milan uh, Janis Janša orchestrated on behalf of Milan Kuchan attack on Slovenian police investigator. You see, they were setting each other up. Uh, one month earlier, it was on March that um attack took place on Slovenian police investigator uh, Slovenian police investigator and it was the next month then on May that it was the robbery that took further so they they felt so comfortable uh about doing a stuff let me let me demonstrate you about the palavas you know Affair, affair, affair de Palavas took place on uh, March 1994. Uh, this was an attack on uh, um, police investigator, criminalist, criminalist police investigator who investigated um, a special unit called Morris Morse. Uh, the thing is that the goal of Milan Kuchan was to this band compulsory what was known as Territorialna Obramba Slovenian. In other words, Milan Kuchan craved for totalitarian, totalitaristic state, totalitarian state. Uh, and I was also at what you see here, at this affair here, at this affair, the Palavas, they had me there too. I had to witness drugged up breakdown of Slovenian state. Basically, I had to watch drugged up in front of my eyes what I fought my entire life for. Slovenian state basically decimated in front of my eyes without any ability, without any capacity to act to defend, to stand up, done literally through the people like Janez Jansha, Loise Peterle, Igor Boucher, and so on, and so that the people that Slovenian nation credited for Slovenians for Slovenian independence in 1991, in 1990. So this is a horror that they brain massaged me with um, because uh, the countries are destroyed from within by eaten morale, by betrayal, 
Uh, that's basically how the countries are destroyed uh, to accomplish the maximum effect for Milan Kuchan. Yanis Jansha, in fact, deputized his uh, leader of this special unit whom Yanis Jansha personally commanded. Yeah, Yanis Jansha was the one who commanded this special unit, Morse. And he authorized his um, deputy for a minister, uh, actually deputy for this Morse unit, whose name is Tone Krkovic, Tone Krkovic, uh, to ahead of this attack on the police investigator create uh, the so-called exercise with uh, the name uh, a descent basically attack assault on ministry for defense can you fucking imagine this is this like completely insane or is it not insane is like descent attack assault on slovenian ministry for defense uh it was it took place at night, uh, at night to disturb people as much as possible, uh, to get as much as possible attention, therefore, a call one descent on a ministry for, in, um, for defense, for the Slovenian defense, uh, and so that police investigators would investigate uh, in agreement with obvious individual who did this stuff, who acted only accordingly with the instructions uh, of Janis Jansha, opposition from Milan Kuchan, therefore, uh, to create the incident uh, which uh, the final goal was actually to destroy uh, what was known as Territorialno Bramba. in which I also served myself. What is so special about the Territorial Nobramba, Slovenia? A composition of the civilians. Civilians had a right to meddle into this one. Uh, it was not exclusively a military. Uh, it was like a national thing that should defend interests of Slovenian citizens, Slovenian integrity, national integrity, independence. That's what it was so special about this. Territoriano Bramba was not formed out of military or something, but was formed into military defense during assault on Slovenia by the greater Serbian Chetnik state, still known as Yugoslavia in 1990. So this is what was so special about this territorial defense. So what they want to do is they want to take down also territorial defense. We don't need any of that stuff. It was, in fact, replaced in 1995 with so-called Slovenian military. So what we see now is, is destruction of the institutions to which, which, they, which served a democratic process of Slovenian independence from greater Serbian Chetnik state, or I would say even from Russia, from Kremlin, uh, and a systematic formation of outdoor, authoritarian, authoritarian, Autocracy, authoritarianism, authoritarianism. No, no. Uh, okay, authoritarian, 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 authoritarianism, authoritarianism. So. They were forming a dictatorship of the country. If we go back to this human rights ombudsman here, 
Uh, and I explained that they were preparing to destroy me. Uh, probably 1998, they started with this process in Ljubljana. Where are you going to complain? What are you going to do? Uh, what European Union is going to bring to you? You're going to get this, you're going to get this, you're going to get that, you're going to get this, that, 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 that. And I was cheering those values of the European Union. Uh, human rights ombudsman, uh, you know, um, special investigation unit against crime, all that stuff, which every European country is a must to have. Court for Human Rights in Strasbourg and so on. But the only thing that Milan Kuchan was doing, uh, he was taking me from door to door for beatings. He would uh, characteristically bring me into a neighborhood in Ljubljana. Then the torture would go on for about a week, minimum one week, uh, maybe two weeks. And the last stop would be exactly at the office of the Human Rights Ombudsman uh, Supreme Court uh, Criminal Investigation Unit uh, and so on. So this was a typical classic Milan Kuchan Borut Pahur. Borut Pahur is this individual here. Let me demonstrate him. This here, this individual, this is this was a Slovenian president. This this is, uh, but this was the worst. What they refer to as a Stasi in Germany, individual you possibly can imagine, that breathed nothing but death behind my collar. The beginning 1991, everything, the orders he would take were the orders that come from Moscow. Just as this man here, who was the first human rights ombudsman, is taking the orders from Moscow and serve them inside of the General uh, Council of European Union in Brussels. It, this is this is a Mos Moskvich, is this individual, you understand? This is a Vladimir Putin, which you see right there. That's what that is. That's what that is. That that's uh that's this Slovenian here. It's like you, you see a Vladimir Putin sitting inside. That's all there is. You wonder if the Russia is inside of the European Union. Fuck yeah. What do you see right there? What do you see? You see Vladimir Putin. Where is he? Well, he is inside of the General Council of the European Union. And it's even better. He is a general director of directorat for justice and interior uh, ministry inside of the General um, Council of the European Union inside of the Brussels. So, this is one human rights ombudsman. I'm giving you the evolution of the human rights in Slovenia through which a slavery is about to be born again. They are building a new slavery. That's why it matters so much. And you have this here with incredibly impressive resume, individual selected literally by Prince Charles, now King Charles, who demanded somebody and who boosted his reputation. You understand, he boosted his reputation literally not through Slovenia, but literally through Austrian government where a daughter of Boris Yeltsin I'm not going to say at my protest, because I am no Austrian citizen, 
but Austrian government did orchestrate it to me in Vienna during the ceremony when she became an Austrian citizen in 2009. This is a daughter from Boris Yeltsin, yeah? My rights didn't go down the toilet or something in my life or something like that. Slovenian citizenship destroyed. American citizenship destroyed. Who did this stuff? Berlin. Deutschland did this shit. Do you know that? You are closer to be as a humanity annihilated than you possibly, possibly can fucking imagine through that little state that you Americans travel to, to goof. It's called Slovenia. You see this here? She is a, a Russian Austrian. Funny that Austrian government was asking me if she should get this Austrian citizenship. What a bullshit. Uh, it's funny to me because I have to acknowledge, I have just seen here on Bill Gates's website it popped up here. Hell, look at it. Just as I was told, it's going to be. This is MK Ultra News. I didn't take a note of it. But let me demonstrate to you what that looks like, what, what they're doing now. Blunder of King Philip of Belgium. He shouldn't have done this. I don't know what the news is, but I'm going to explain to you how they read to me to this shit during MK Ultra. With the exact individual that you see in the background. If you will not side with us, Europeans, Deutschland, Deutschland, über alles. Yesterday, the news read King William uh, of Netherlands, blunder of King William from Netherlands. And they rape with this shit. Day after day after day, you betray us, you la 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 la. You know who betray you? Here I'm gonna turn the fucking camera on so that you get to see me. You know who betray who? When I was beaten up in Sweden, when I was beaten up in Norway, because I insulted minorities, So they could give boost to Vladimir Putin for the war in the Ukraine. When I insulted minorities in Germany, when I insulted minorities in Netherlands, remember, I'm talking about the kings, you kings of Europe right now. Remember what you did. Why was it necessary to create this kind of... Um, issues if you were my allies why was it necessary to torture like an animal what is it you kings of europe you don't know anything about what is going on in front of your palace even because the shit took place also in front of the palace it took place all over the place you don't know anything you met with Vladimir Putin inside of this house here since 1995, even before this. Since 1994, you were probably already meeting him. Before this was Yeltsin, they wouldn't come. It would be seldomly. It started to boost their visits in 1995 with my departure to the United States of America, where you kings of Europe use me to advance your relations with Russians for the sake of this here, for the sake of this issue here. Because you're crushing, um, I'm going to call this a, a world order, whatever you want to call this, but this issue here, So that what you see here could come to life.
this actually did came to life um except that <laughs> the slaves during the age of american uh beginnings were in way better position than i was what exactly does it feel to be you alone in this world isolated here in this world but not exist i don't know probably i can affiliate the most to astronaut in the space without really having the ability to communicate with anybody and that's what king charles believed is going to be again the result of my visit in ljubljana which they tortured me over and over and over again beginning in 1998 you're talking about 98 and so you're talking about Seventeen years minimum of a regular torture, not every year a session, but frequent tortures throughout Ljubljana, where I would eventually even meet police officers patrolling in streets uh, and uh, parkings uh, on in direction of Novomesto Ljubljana, uh, where they assumed I would afterwards parked the car had arguments during mk ultra with my mother whether i can use the car from the father and all kinds of stuff that she, that she will not i will not allow you and so on and so forth and so that i would just go and plainly walk all the way even to ljubljana they anticipated uh, which would drilled me where exactly i would sleep and shit not only it and bat inside of the streams to remain clean during repeated visits to the slovenian human rights ombudsman uh future who, human rights ombudsman who however whose career according to charles who wrote him a resume very different than mine uh, would be extremely, and I'm, I can tell you that based on his rem, resume is extremely, extremely impressive. But I must tell you that this individual at this very location alone, inside of his office, throughout the building, where Human Rights Ombudsman is located, would, during his visits to Slovenia, wash my brain in respect to issues um, concerning, well, I'm just gonna say like this, it was always, will not be capable to help you, will not be capable to help you. Uh, and then it was, uh, through this lady here that you see here, became uh, selected by Milan Kuchan, President of Slovenia. A new President of Slovenia. She replaced uh, Borut Pahor. This one here. Got an instruction from her on how I have to uh act properly when i meet him nice uh be kind to him remember him uh as the one uh, as the man who eventually will save my life uh that there is also people like this in slovenia there is also people like this in slovenia that not everybody is bad in Slovenia. Do you get a you, you get an idea? 
Do you get an idea? If you know the case of mine, you will get to come, you will understand what Slovenia have done against me as a country and as a nation collectively. This is a son from Milan Kochan here. He's a multimillionaire, want to just buy a nuclear uh, facility here in Slovenia. The island from Janus Jansha is a paradise. These are the people that were involved in MK Ultra. This billionaires, millionaires, relatives of Milan Kuchan, such as let's say Hilda Tovshak, let's say, uh, a sister from um She blew so much money that you can't even count. They formed their own membership of the people, so to say, for the crime to flourish, basically for the mafia, for the Moscow mafia, basically Moskvichy, Belgrade, the crime, the more atrocities, the more crime you possibly can imagine, the more the whole thing is profitable. And the one who did this shit is this man, you see here, who told me also will stay four months on his position as a king, will have to depart, and that because he's linked to the Srebrenica genocide, famous Srebrenica genocide. I already have spoken about. So This is a sister from Milan Kuchan, his wife. But the real money in Milan Kuchan, his family, have his children. The real money in Milan Kuchan, his family, have partners. The same thing as to what applies to Janez Jansha. Uh, and I'm not going to go into it because Jansha made sure he would get the money through his partners and so on and so forth. That this is a uh, this is this is this this goes beyond the economic crime. It goes it goes into something else. Uh, they disbanded. They disbanded everything. They disbanded. They disbanded military and they wanted me to witness these things uh they destroyed the justice system they destroyed uh, every value i was fighting for i had suffered during the so-called yugoslavia or i should say greater serbian chetnik state and trust me they didn't do it because of me for me as they claimed, they did so the Yugoslavia could come back on the picture. They did so they could grab the money as much as possible. That's all there is to it. There is nothing else about this Slovenian ombudsman. He told me that the only thing impressive about that he, that he went on um, he engaged in a schizophrenic sessions uh reading already the stuff which whatever slovenian state planned against me such as uh destruction of property like postal services for which he he came to conclusion i'm going to complain to him uh would be the only thing that somehow he could see himself through but other than that there's nothing really impressive with me so i'm going to give this scumbag here a nice diplomatic session of what is known as the opportunity to act according to his duties but i'm 100 percent certain and to tell you the truth i don't want the scumbag to assist me because he's a scumbag 
He's a criminal. He's a criminal. But if he's going to do it, he's going to do it based on what I have stated and not based on whatever King Charles have written for the sake of robbery even that took place in Klagenfurt in 1994. Not even so that he would look good, but literally, literally because it was such a disgrace that went on when this started. Because I was, I was labeled as a Nazi. I was labeled as no good. But in the background of it all, it was something totally different that went on. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, the rest of it, for what is the rest between this individual that you have seen, it started with this guy. I demonstrated you how it all ended, with whom it all ended, with this one. No? So it started with this guy, it ended with a guy that I demonstrated you, uh, and then, boy, as for the rest of it, this lady was involved in it. I wish I would have something good to say, but the only thing I can say about her is the same thing as if I could say about Scandinavia, uh, the same thing as if I could say about the Germany, you know, I wish... I could say something good. I wish. But why did you guys try to, you who colonized, you who murdered in Congo, entire Congo? That's about Belgium, right? Okay. Okay. This is another Saxe Coburg Gotha right here that you see. This is a cousin of Prince King Charles. Uh, why did you guys, who caused so much pain, so much suffering to the world, Why were you guys so eager to make me the enemy of the world? To make me look bad as much as possible. I'm going to tell you why. Because you didn't have a face. To face world. To even look people over the colors, over the races, ethnicities. Eastern Europeans alone in their eyes. From Sweden, Norway. Holland, Netherlands, I should say, Belgium, Great Britain, Germany. Because opposed to Elon Musk, it was too much money. It was too costly. And this is the most convenient way for you would be for me to make the enemy out of me, enemy of the world. Because that's what you started in Moscow already, in 1993. That's what Vladimir Putin did. They took me to one examination in Moscow, and then they started to take me for a medical surgical procedures in Moscow, which I really, really didn't need, being hijacked from Slovenia, drugged up, delivered to the Moscow, so that I could see myself as much as possible with these people here. Chopped. Shopping started in Moscow so that I could see myself in Prince Andrew, in Prince Charles, so that I could beg them for mercy, which I did in Moscow, beginning in 1992, in 1993, so that I could see myself in a most negative way. Like the N-word, I didn't want to use a little earlier. When you ripped my rights to exist, not the human rights, but the rights to exist, systematically, with idea, to deprive the entire humanity yet again. Of what other than existence, basically. That's why. That's who betray what? That's who betray whom? Um, this lady here maybe was the nicest one. Uh, I did gave her a very negative. Um, reference. 
on what she actually even turned against me. Um, she had some not too damn good, I would say. She was a human rights from 2013 uh, to uh, 2007, 2013. Uh, affiliate also with Ljubljana, Polia, and so on. Um, I don't have enough time to actually go over all these people and so on, but I just wanted to do a really, really fast um, about the human rights in Slovenia and how much these human rights actually do concern you what is going on inside of the europe and what this has to do with you and it doesn't matter where where you are whether you're in the us i'm american citizen no. 94 university diploma john hopkins baltimore usa psychiatric Centra, uh, psychiatric hospital Ljubljana, polia um Um, this, this, even if I would want to give her a positive review, not even to this one, I cannot. You, I'm sure you understand uh, that she was in a center, in the epicenter of crime, of genocide against me. I'm sure you understand the word genocide. So that if you met me in the United States of America and... Uh, Inside a psychiatric hospital where you became, I don't know what, uh, and participated in this stuff, uh, you must have also have not only engaged in this stuff, but also coordinated, definitely witnessed, and have absolutely done throughout. Okay, I'm not going to say 33 years, last 33 years, but beginning of your psychiatric clinic employment um, London 1998 um, you got to understand that from Slovenia or from the Eastern Europe anywhere anything that would have to do with the West was the thing impossible but you see with the people that I touch frequently have on their resume London uh, frequently have on their on their resume uh, what is this here University of John Hopkins and so on and so forth uh, it was it was it was not it was seldomly interchangeable it was really really not only only well only the people that were trusted that really would depart uh, to those areas and so on to receive additional uh, schooling, education, and so on and so forth. So, is this stuff here concerns you? I think so. I think it concerns you. Uh, I think it actually concerns you a lot. Mm, also, very important stuff that I was, uh, that concerns me a lot. And it's especially why this I, 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 um, uh, let me just, just show you this picture again, okay? I'm really, really, really stressed out about this. I don't want to say. All this stuff is related. All this impressive stuff is related to Austria. Yeah, that's where he got this biggest credentials from uh it's all about the austria austria this austria that uh the days when bobby robert bobby was my name was nice to you the days are gone i'm sure you understand that opposed to elon musk to the people that were nobodies i am the the oldest person who was in the picture, longer than anybody, around whom the whole thing twisted for no less than 33 years. 
I was treated, the postal Elon Musk, like, I don't even want to explain how I was treated, okay? Uh, and so, when I consider that the daughter of Yeltsin, uh, I was asking Austria if she, sh she is entitled, she should get the Austrian citizenship. I think this is like, like an ultimate derision for me from the Austrian, from the German side of the border that really, really makes me relate. Not to the issue that this guy is, you know, this company, Mladina, is trying to say I'm a nigger. Basically, I'm a nigger. Because you are a nigger, because you don't have the place, the right to go anywhere and complain. You are a nigger. And this is the modern age of slavery. It's a butchery. It's more than a slavery. Slaves had families. They were not butchered for the experimentation. Maybe they were, who knows? And that's what makes me affiliate with the black guy. Not the black guy that you see in an orange right there, that's sitting right there, but with the black race. Eventually to even see myself as a non-white person. I don't see myself as a white person, to tell you the truth. And I really, really, really don't want to be thankful to anybody for the genocide, for the extermination. I am never going to be thankful to anybody for extermination, for the butchery, for butchering me in this life. I'm never going to say thank you. It's my job. To drag you in a court and exterminate you. That's my job. Is My job is to exterminate you through all the legal means that exist. That is my job. That's what God, my Lord, dictates me is my job. Never ever am I going to go and say, yeah, I am a nigger because of what you have done to me, because of how you wanted to present me. Nigger is a derogatory term for the black people that Anglo-Saxon Germans, the Aryans, have used throughout their world, calling even Nigeria a country uh, as derogatory word as I stated. I will be your nigger if you are a black person, a good person, but I am never going to be your nigger. Till the end, all the way to the grave, it's either going to be you or it's going to be me, but it's never going to be two. It's never going to be both. You drag me. You destroyed my life. You ruined my life for the Satan, Lucifer, you have in Moscow. And all I'm going to say is we're going to dance to hell. But one thing I guarantee you, it's either you or me, but it never ever will be two. It's going to be court on a Strasbourg. It's not going to be only Ljubljana. It's going to be whatever it's going to be. So that you can prove your case, so that you can prove your point, your might, your greatness, your crime against humanity. As for humanity without having any ability to defend yourself, to defend itself against you. That's all I have to say for this video. You want it, you will get it from me.